The microfilaria inhabit the lung capillaries during the day, and then at night they migrate to the peripheral blood, where they're again available to the mosquitoes. Slide. Uh, pathology. After years of hypersensitivity, we have about elephantiasis in 10% of cases. Adult reaction includes swelling, pain, enlargement, and slight massive fibrosis of the limbs and genitalia. Lights. Professor Ross, how can I help you? Yeah, I was wondering if I could talk to you a second about my latest paper. Steve Johnson, isn't it? That's right. You know, I put a lot of time and effort into this paper. And I don't feel the grade that you gave me reflects my true knowledge of the material. I agree, but I can only judge what's in front of me. I think if you look back at your paper, you'll discover that you failed to lay a proper foundation. At least, it wasn't evident to me. I guess I was trying too hard to make an impression. Don't get me wrong. There was a lot about the paper that I found intriguing. But as scientists, we can only allow ourselves to be guided by the facts. They always make an impression. I remember that. Good. Richard, I know you've been at the university only a short time, but uh, during that time, you've proven yourself to be an excellent instructor, and your research work is promising. Well, thank you, Mr. Murdoch. The university has been a really good working environment for me. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. You know, sometimes I, I feel like I'm running an asylum rather than a college. <laughs> well, you do have all kinds here. But I'm very serious about my work, and I'd really like to make a future here at the school. Well, Richard, the reason I asked you here today is because we've received a special grant from the Winsboro Foundation. Now, we're looking for someone to use this grant to bring some recognition to the school, if you know what I mean. I've been doing some research into diseases involving parasitic agents, and, and this grant would really help further that work. Well, Richard, you're one of our rising young stars. I look forward to your submission. Thanks. Richard? Charles, what can I do for you? Do you have a minute? I've really got to go over Wilson's right now. He's got some new discovery or other, and I'm late already. Wilson is running a fucking freak show. I've got a problem. What did you do to your hand? I had a little accident. There's something wrong with me. Well, maybe you should see a doctor. Doctor can't help me. Can you spare a minute? How about later? We'll go for a drink or something, okay? Fine. If you want to help me, fuck you. Sean, what's up? Richard, you're late. Aha. What did I tell you? It's a letter from a colleague in Chicago about a clairvoyant case that really looks promising. I'm hoping to get up there and catalog the subject for my next book. John, I don't know how you find the energy. Richard, admit it. The paranormal is a legitimate science. My presence here at the university is living proof of that. The only thing I'll admit to is a good scientist spending way too much time with mystery mongers and the mentally unsound. Stop fighting it, Richard. Look, I'm flying up there next month to Chicago to interview the clairvoyant, and the offer to join me is still open. What? Are you mad? And let Audrey's mother plan the whole wedding. What was a little ceremony is now turned into the gallus social event of the year, and that was the compromise. So, why am I here? I'm having a party tonight, and I want you to come, and I want you to bring Audrey. I thought you were going to show me something. Not something, someone. Why all the mystery? Stop asking questions, Richard. Just be at the party. You're going to see the most amazing discovery I've ever made. Party starts at 8. Don't be late.
Yeah, I Usual? Oh, why not? Richard, you wanted something positive? I have someone positive. She is a phenomenon. A phenomenon. There's no questions this time. A she? Where did you find her? Between the bearded lady and the elephant man? My wife knew her as a child. They grew up together in Nebraska. Oh, Nebraska. Yes, Nebraska. Her father was a rainmaker during the Depression. Fuck it, Tony, please. Look, her name is Miss Voyage. Thank you. She's only been here a couple of weeks. She knows no one outside of the university community. And from what she said and from what I've seen, there's no question of her authenticity. Oh, I'm sure she's the real thing. Richard, look, just promise me you'll keep an open mind on this. Oh, as always, John, as always. I tell you, she's different. She's what I've been waiting for. But, John, what do you really know about this woman? I know enough to be satisfied. I, I don't mean your intuition. I mean, you know, concrete facts. <laughs> Why don't you judge for yourself? Why don't you top this up before the entertainment begins? Miss Voyage, this is Professor Austin. It's my pleasure. Uh, please sit down. Professor Austin is a non-believer. Professor Austin should be a skeptic. Science and religion often dismiss what they don't understand out of fear and ignorance. Maybe you could convert him. We were hoping you might give us a demonstration this evening. <laughs> I would need a volunteer. Perhaps you, Professor Austin. For what? Mesmerism. Hypnotism. No, no, no. An offshoot of hypnotism. It was abandoned late in the 19th century by scientists who found themselves at a loss to explain it. I find it difficult to believe that science would ignore such a phenomenon if it indeed had produced valid results. He'll be perfect. In my experience, the hypnotists and faith healers use subjects who are eager for attention and acceptance. Don't we all want that? Well, but you need subjects who are a little less impressionable. Well, which of these ladies would you say is less impressionable? Select one. Perhaps the woman in the black dress with the pearls? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Miss Voich, this is my girlfriend, Audrey. Hello. Audrey, would you mind helping us settle an argument? Sure. What do you want me to do? That feels good. You might feel a little pain in a moment, but it'll pass. Then you'll feel better than you ever have before. She's in a trance. I think she fell asleep. Wake her then. Audrey. Wake up, Audrey. Wake up. Shall we proceed? Audrey, raise your right arm and keep it there. Richard, try to lower her arm.
Well, Mr. Boric, thank you for a very intriguing evening. Forgive me if I try to overcome your skepticism, Professor. I'll call you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Come on, Richard. Good night. Are you staying? Oh, I'm sorry. We've still got work to do tonight. Oh, it's Friday night, for God's sake. Tomorrow night, I promise. We'll soon be married, and then you won't be able to get rid of me. Mm, all right. But you won't escape me tomorrow night. Mm. How did it feel? The kiss? No, no, the, the, the seance thing at the party. Um, it felt good, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. You looked like you were enjoying yourself. Mm. I enjoyed this. Your professor Austin. Hi, Lee. Richard, I've come to tell you that the engagement is off. What? The engagement is off. What do you mean? What's wrong? It's over, Richard. But why? Because of last night? Because I didn't stay? I mean, what's happened since then? It's useless, Richard. It's over. How can we fix this if you won't tell me what's wrong? Audrey, I love you. Don't do this. Goodbye, Richard. Audrey, for Christ's sake, tell me what the hell is going on. Hello? Hello, Professor Austin. Please excuse the personal nature of the test I gave you. Miss Voynich? Professor Wilson happened to mention that you and Audrey were engaged, and it struck me that nothing would be more convincing to you then if I were to suggest to Audrey that she come visit you at 9.30 this morning and suspend your engagement for half an hour or so. What? Science is so exacting, it's so difficult to give a really satisfying test. But I was convinced this was something she never would have done of her own free will. Forget anything she may have said to you. She didn't have anything to do with it and she won't remember anything about it. I just wanted to call and ask you to forgive me for the momentary unhappiness my suggestion must have caused you. Miss Voyage. Goodbye. Pleasant surprise. I had to see you. Is that so? Have you been out today? No. Would you mind telling me exactly what you did this morning? You've got on your professional look. If you must know, I woke up at 8. I had breakfast at half past. And then at nine, I laid down here and took a nap. I dreamt of you. And when you woke up, you were here. Where else would I be? If you haven't been out, why are you all sweaty like you've been jogging? What's wrong with you? You act as if you're trying to catch me in a lie or something. 
I'm perspiring because it's hot in here, and I stretch out before I run. I'm sorry. I'm not doubting you. I just had to find out something. It's perfectly evident she remembered nothing about it. Just probably just as well. She might have been badly frightened. What did I tell you, Richard? Miss Voyage is the best evidence I've ever come across. I'm impressed. My horizons have certainly been expanded, and I can understand why you act like a madman at times. Richard, I take my work very seriously. I love it. Who wouldn't work hard with a vast virgin field like this in front of them? My research pales a bit by comparison. I just seem to be regurgitating old ideas. That's why we have to learn to think in completely different ways. To be open to new ideas, to document what we don't understand. Well, documentation's very well, but we have to have a well-defined experiment in unbiased subjects. I know, I know. And it's always difficult to completely eliminate the bias. That's why I need to document her abilities now, before she leaves. Get her to stay longer. If she stays, I'll still need an unbiased subject. What about yours truly? Would I be a cynical enough subject for you? Yes. Yes. Look, Richard, come by tonight and we'll talk to her. You'd be perfect. Helena. Helena. Professor Austin's downstairs. Helena. Thank you, Liz. I know. Is everything okay? I'm fine. I'll just be a minute. Okay. What you said about suggestion just being the tip of the iceberg, I mean, what is the extent of your abilities? Yes, for example, it's possible to gain complete control over a subject, provided they're impressionable. Even without the subject's knowledge? Well, that depends. If the force were strongly exerted, they would know nothing. If the influence was less powerful, they might be aware of what they were doing, but be unable or unwilling to stop themselves from doing it. So the subject has no willpower? It would be overridden by a stronger one. Is your force that strong? Well, it doesn't entirely depend on that. Some subjects have strong wills which aren't detachable from themselves. The trick lies in my being able to project my will into another person while suppressing his. What does your body experience? I feel somewhat lethargic. Actually, I found that my power varies along with my health. Is there ever any danger to you? There might be a little. I have to be careful never to let my own consciousness absolutely go, otherwise I might not be able to find my way back. I have to be careful to preserve the connection. What happens if you can't find your way back? Well, then I'd need to find a new body. Hey, the camera's ready. It's in focus. We're going to get this whole thing on tape, Richard. Good. How's it coming over there? I don't know, John. Where did you dig this stuff up? The basement? Come on, it doesn't look like much, but it works. Shall we begin?
on, Richard. Let me get these off. Professor Austin sounds so formal. May I call you Richard? Yeah, sure. Well, Richard, you'll feel better than you have in a long while. Yeah. It's one of the side effects. Was I under? For an hour. You'll make an excellent subject. Charles. Sure, have a seat. What can I do for you, Charles? Well, Richard, I hear you're being experimented upon by Miss Voyage. Well, as a matter of fact, Wilson and I are doing some experiments with Miss Voyage, yes. You don't know what you're dealing with. She can make you do things. I know that. When she first arrived, I was interested. But later things became less clear. She made me do things. I couldn't tell where it started and when it stopped. What do you mean, Charles? You think I'm crazy. You're wrong. Charles! Charles! If you don't stop now, you'll find out for yourself. Then it'll be too late. Oh, now that is a That pretty. is pretty. Yes. The colors come kind of strange, though. Well, I think it comes in lots of different shades. Does it? What about oh, like pink or white? Oh, yes, pink would be beautiful. Let's not wait. <laughs> That's only a few more months. We agreed a June wedding would be perfect. I'm not working and you're not teaching. Besides, there are still so many things to be arranged. For God's sake, you still haven't picked a caterer. Why no, but it, it doesn't matter what we eat. As long as we're together, that's what's important. We are together. The wedding will be beautiful. I know, but why wait? Because we want this done right. I think you'll make it. Probably. I've been expecting you. Hi, Miss Voyage. Sorry I'm late. Audrey and I were just going over the wedding plans. There must be many arrangements. Are you ready?
Did you uh, forget about our appointment? What appointment? You don't remember? We were supposed to go over my latest paper? Um, listen, I'm really busy right now. Why don't you come back on, on Thursday? Yeah, but it's due Thursday. Uh, okay, tomorrow morning, 9.30. Does, does that suit you? 9.30. So, what should we do tonight? Gin, rummy, or video? Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta go over to Wilson's tonight. You were over there last night. What's going on? We were just doing some work together. With Miss Voyage? Yeah. Should I be jealous? forgot I'm leaving for Chicago tomorrow. We're going to have to put the research on hold for a week. What? Why didn't you tell me about it? I did. Remember, it's the clairvoyant case I told you about. It's only a week. I think we can manage. Who's going to document the results? The camera will. Research is difficult. You gotta pay the price if you're gonna do good work. I want you to stop. There. No, I want you to stop this research. That's ridiculous. Look, things will be really different for us when I finish this paper. But I can't I can't stop now. This work's way too important. I'm going home. Audrey. Better get me unhooked. All right. How are you, Tony?
Hello? Miss Voyage? Richard, please, call me Helena. Oh, okay. Uh, um, Helena? Uh, I've been looking at my notes on my other work, and uh, I've noticed I've got a deadline on some things. I'm sorry, um, we're going to have to postpone our, our work for a few days. Uh, at least until Wilson gets back. Oh, I understand. If you change your mind... Okay, okay. Good night. Richard, what are you doing here? Can I come in? You haven't called in days. You look terrible. Please, can I come in? Work so hard. My work's important. You don't eat, you don't sleep. You just work on that woman. Why it's so important? What about your other work? Isn't that important? You don't understand. I guess I don't understand. What's happening to us, Richard? Please have a seat. I'm glad you stopped by. I've been meaning to speak to you. I um, understand you've been missing some of your classes. And I haven't seen your proposal for the grant. Everyone else has turned in theirs. Uh, well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, sir. Good. What's the delay? Well, my work is... Uh taken a turn of his late, quite a, quite a radical turn. Interesting. Go on. Well, I don't know where to start. Uh, as you know from Wilson's proposal... Um, well, that what do you mean? Wilson and I were doing an experiment together. Wilson? What kind of an experiment? Uh, isn't in his proposal. No. No, he didn't mention you at all. I see. What about the rest of your work? I'm, I'm returning to that, and uh, I'll, I'll have the proposal on your desk by the end of the week. I hope so. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me. Richard! Richard! Hi! Oh, hi, Liz. I haven't seen you for a while. What, with Helena being so sick? Sick? Well, yeah, she has the flu or something. She should be able to continue when John returns. When does he get home? Sometime next week. And he's really anxious to get back to work. Listen, I got a class. I got to go. Bye. Goodbye. I 
If any of you have uh, questions about your test or your papers, I'll be in my office the rest of the day. I have a question about today's lecture. Yeah? Well, you said in class today that the species is unable to sustain a parasitic relationship to the host for more than a month. But, uh, it says right here in the book, a lifetime. You must be mistaken. No. Nah, it's right there. You know, there were a lot more discrepancies, too. Listen, who wrote this book? I did. You're obviously mistaken. I, I think you should be studying and preparing a little more for class. I'm not the only one who noticed. That's enough! Good day. Mrs. Wilson. She's not here. When did I get here? This tape is for you, Richard. Our experiment was a little different tonight. I thought you might be interested.
I was concerned about you. How are you? Much better now that you're here. I brought you something. To whom I love the most. Without you, the sun will not shine and my life will end. We are one forever. Oh, my love, Richard. Oh, Richard, I've tried to do too much. I'm not strong enough yet. But I couldn't live another day without seeing you. You won't leave me, will you, Richard? This is just a passing weakness. Just give me five minutes and I'll be myself again. No, it's not me. This is not me. No, no, Richard, no. This isn't me, you sick, disgusting woman. I love Richard, I love you. Just like you love Charles Sadler and whoever else before him. Sadler, he told you. You knew I was engaged to be married to Audrey, and yet you, you raped me. If you ever do this again, remember that I said tonight that I love Audrey. <laughs> Professor Austin, are you okay? Would you call the college and tell them I won't be in today? How did you get in? Your cleaning lady was kind enough to let me in. Well, are you still of the same mind? I've always been of the same mind. But it was you who asked me to enter into the experiments with you. It was you who won my affections. It was you who made love to me. It was you who brought me your photograph with words of love on it. Then you insulted me. No one has ever spoken to me like that before. But just tell me those words were said in a fit of passion. You didn't mean what you said, Richard. Get out! You'll curse the day you turned me from a friend to an enemy.
The body more often functions to control parasite populations rather than eliminating them. Thus a balance is struck whereby both parasite and host survive through compromise. Oh. Itsy bitsy spider climbed up the garden spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went down the spout again. I knew you'd come. Well, have you had enough yet? Must I take everything from you? Tell me you love me. I'm not finished with you. You will love me. Do you still want me to take your tux to the cleaners to be pressed for the banquet tomorrow night? Yeah. What a mess. You'd sure think a growing man could clean up after himself. Aren't you going to be late for class? I'm going to be working at home for the rest of the semester, Mabel. Whatever for. I'm going to be working at home for the rest of the semester. <laughs> John, you scared the shit out of me. A little jumpy these days. You don't know what's out there. They're not going to get in through all that. How was your trip? It was good. Did a lot of good work. How are the experiments going? She didn't tell you. Tell me what? I've abandoned them. What for? Yeah, the experiments. They're very dangerous. What do you mean, dangerous? John, have, have you ever heard of a hypnotist gaining control of their subject and, and then using them for evil purposes? Well, there's dozens. Crimes by suggestion? No, I don't, I don't mean suggestion. It's like a sudden impulse that comes from a person at a distance. A sudden, uncontrollable impulse. Very few. You're not suggesting that... No. No. No, I'm not suggesting anything. Then why all these questions? Look, I'm, I'm really tired right now, John. Richard, is there something wrong? I've, I've got a lot of work to do. Okay, Liz is probably holding supper for me anyhow. We'll talk tomorrow, okay? What's going on, Professor Austin? Uh, it's... it's research. Austin residence. Yes, just one moment. Audrey. Audrey? When? I'll be right over. I came as quick as I could. What happened? Aunt Sarah collapsed. She's in the hospital. Oh, we still don't know what happened. They're running tests. We'll know better when we get there. I'll check out the house. Make sure we haven't left anything. I wish you didn't have to go. Not now. What's happening to us? To you. I love you. I love you too. Oh, God. I wish we could get away from all this. Get married today. When I get back, I promise. 
Would you promise me one thing? Mm -hmm. If you ever see Miss Voyage again, don't let her touch you. So it's over then? No more. I'm so glad, Richard. I was afraid it affected your health and I was concerned to leave you alone. You've been acting so strange lately. Don't go. I have to go. Professor Austin. Sorry to hear about what happened in class. Can we find something? Welcome to the Channel 13 Late Evening News. It's 10 o'clock, and I'm Richard Bell. Tonight's top story, murder in Center City. Early this evening, a store clerk at the local Checkmark convenience store was brutally beaten to death while working the late shift. There are no suspects at this time, but police have ruled out robbery as a possible motive since nothing was taken from the store. The identity of the victim is being held until next of kin can be notified, but police do tell us that the victim is a 19-year-old... Professor Austin, Professor Austin, I, I thought I'd let you sleep in this morning, but it's getting late, and, and I know you have lots of things to do before the awards banquet tonight. What time is it? It's noon already. You know, I, I really don't know how to tell you this, but Professor Sadler called this morning. He said what, one of your students was killed last night. Did he say who? 
Well, no, he didn't say, but I know he was very, very upset. He wants you to call him right away. Well, I'll go to the cleaners now and pick up your tuxedo. Thanks, Mabel. Charles, what happened? Are you crazy? You're lucky I didn't have you arrested. I did this. Who else? You jumped me as I was getting in my car. Charles, believe me, I didn't do it. She did. She did. She knew we'd both be there. She imposed her will on me again. 
believe me, this is nothing compared to what she's done to my life. Now she started back into me again. Why? Why? She suspects that you warned me about her. I am not going to let her do this to me again. How are we going to stop? Richard, are you here to congratulate me? What? The grant! I won the grant! It's Miss Voich here. What happened to your hand? Miss Voich. Come in. Elena and I were just discussing how to continue with our procedures. You have a call. Thanks, Annie. Excuse me. to you, Professor Austin, or is it just Mr. Austin now? How's your friend Charles this Listen, morning? Listen, if you touch me again, I'll kill you. Like you killed that young man. You killed him, not me. No, I believe a witness said she saw a man fleeing the scene. Things aren't settled between us, Richard. I can love and I can hate. You had your choice. You rejected the first and you chose to test the second. Well, isn't this what you wanted? To know the limits of my power? You're a fool. I understand Audrey comes home tomorrow. Leave her out of this. You hard Audrey! Oh, Audrey! What the are you doing? What's gotten into you? Audrey's so lucky to have a man like you who threatens women. Shut up! Stop this! Or I'll stop you. You okay? Hi. Hi. I missed you so much. Oh. Mm. What have I ever done to deserve you? <laughs> Here, these are for you. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you. You look tired. Is everything all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that you're home. Mm -hmm. Wilson. Charles Sadler here. Fine. Listen, I was wondering if you and Liz would like to meet me at Cafe Vittorio tonight. Good. I'll make reservations for 8 o'clock. I'll see you there.
Hello? Richard? Yes, it's Charles. Charles. I have a plan. Meet me in front of the Wilson's house in ten minutes. Charles, slow down. Where are you? I don't know. Just be there. you, Richard. Charles. What happened to your face? Oh, my, Charles. This is no way to treat a loved one. will happen.
Richard. You shouldn't have come. I warned you. Steve, Charles, Audrey. I only wanted you. I love you, Richard. I love Audrey. We'll always be together. God, this is the happiest day of my life. I knew we would be together forever. I knew at the first second I saw you at Wilson's party. What? What do you mean? I will make you so 